Hey, this is Jacob from MotionVFX.com and today we'll show you our latest plugin called MCineGraph. It essentially allows you to paint a mask on your video and animate the picked region in a specific way while freezing the remaining part of the frame. This opens up a wide range of uses from extremely classy and tasteful semi-animated sequences to hilarious GIFs which you can share with your friends. So let's dig in! MCineGraph is a filter-based effect, so you'll find it in Final Cut's effects browser under MCineGraph, as well as Motion's filter library in our usual Motion VFX folder. We'll go through its features in FCPX, but first let's take a look at the video itself. The basic principle of this effect relies on the fact that your camera does not move at all. Of course, you could get away with really slight motions or maybe even a stabilized clip, but simply putting your camera on a tripod while shooting will be the best way to go. The same rule applies to your video's content, so if, for example, you want to animate just a person's hand, make sure that your actor's body doesn't move too much when recording. This way you'll avoid offsets between the animated and stationary parts of your effect. Another very important thing you need to remember is that your videos, as well as projects, frame rates and resolutions need to match exactly. While this is kind of obvious for every professional video editor and reading the project settings automatically based on the first clip helps a lot, sometimes you need to match clips from different sources and we all know how this often works out, so if you are forced to use a clip with a different size or frame rate, just drop it into a compound clip and apply MCineGraph on top of the whole thing. Alright, now that we know how to shoot our footage, let's drag the MCineGraph effect onto it and see what happens. As you can see, all we get is a still frame throughout the whole clip. That's because we didn't tell the plugin which parts are supposed to be animated. So let's make sure that our video and effect are selected and move our mouse to the viewer window. As you can see, some bright blurry circle starts to follow my cursor. This is an actual brush which you can use to paint directly inside of your viewport. It's not a fixed brush either, you can access its shape controls via inspector brush settings or by clicking the on-screen menu button which is represented by these three dashes. By the way, you can grab and move this window around and it will even change its direction depending on where you put it. If you move it outside of the frame by accident, just go to the OSC group in the inspector, hit the reset button and it will return to its default position. But going back to our settings. Almost all of them can be found in both of these locations, but we didn't want to overload the on-screen interface, so a couple of them are only accessible via inspector, for example this clear mask button. So although we'll concentrate mainly on the on-screen controls, we will cover the additional parameters along the way as well. We've made sure that you always see what you're doing, so when you move your mouse cursor off the screen or onto the on-screen controls window, the brush remains visible. This way every change in its size, feathering or opacity is instantly visible. Alright, let's paint a quick mask which will reveal the animated part of our clip. By the way, you can hold the Option or Alt key to switch to the Eraser tool. Okay, I think this is gonna be enough. Now when we press play, we'll see that our original footage plays within the part we've just painted. Quick and easy. Of course, depending on the used clip, you may need to create a mask that will cover the majority of the frame. That's what the Invert Mask checkbox is for. It allows you to paint just the stationary parts instead of doing that for almost the entire image. The only difference between this Brush Options tab and the Inspector is the mentioned Clear Mask button, which of course clears everything you've painted so far. Right next to the brush options, you'll find frame options, so let's switch to this tab, unfold its equivalent in the inspector and see what's inside. The play mode defines how your source footage is going to be played within the animated region. You can either stream it directly from your timeline, loop a specific range or play it back and forth. By default we're streaming our original video, so let's change it to loop. As you can see, a couple of things have changed. These two icons became active, and we'll talk about this one a bit later, and a new option showed up in the inspector. So what do they do? 
Well, the two icons let you pick your start and end frame and by doing this you're essentially picking a range from your clip that you want to loop. To do this simply grab one of them, move it left or right and drop it where you want your sequence to start or end. To make things even easier, we're displaying the currently picked frame within the viewport as well as its number right above this cute little timeline. But say you don't want anyone to see that the animated part is being looped. That's what this loop overlap slider is for. By increasing this value, you're basically telling the plugin to blend these loops together over a specific amount of frames, thus giving you a nice smooth transition. Alright, but there's one more slider called pause that isn't available via on-screen controls, so what does it do? Well, pretty much what it says, it pauses your video after each loop. It can be used with both loop and ping pong modes, but know that using it in the loop mode won't work unless the loop overlap value is set to zero. Let's go back to our on-screen timeline and take a look at the blue icon that we didn't cover yet. It's meant for setting up your still frame, but why isn't it available in the inspector? That's because it doesn't simply point to a frame from your footage. By setting it up, you're actually saving it in its current state. What does it mean? It means that you can, for example, stylize your original footage in a specific way, pick the still frame after that, then disable your color corrections and they will still be visible in the stationary part of your MCinegraph effect. Before we head to the export GIF section, let's go back to the top of our inspector. Now that we know how the plugin works, the display modes will make more sense to us, so let's go through them really quickly. Final of course displays the final composition or the end result if you will. Masked will highlight the masked region so that you can see it better. Still frame allows you to preview the image you've picked using this blue icon we've mentioned a moment ago and animated will display the part that you're looping or streaming from your footage. Animated masked mode works almost the same way but it also generates transparency based on your mask. This way you can create several instances of the same effect and stack them on top of each other giving you even more control over the end result. Now let's take a look at the last section from our list which is export GIF. Even though it's just a simple export feature, it's really fun to play with videos of your friends and email them your results. That being said, it will still be useful for serious projects as well. It even allows you to change the output resolution, so making for example a series of GIFs for your website will now be quicker than ever. Alright, so this was a quick overview of our MCinegraph plugin, hopefully it will give you as much joy as it did for us, and feel free to share your work through Twitter or Facebook.